Hello guys, so we start with a little bit of trivia today. What is a Bluetti and an ESP32 has to do with each other? Well, I can obviously plug in the ESP32 into the USB port and uh, then this unit would be able to power the ESP32. So that's definitely one thing that I can do. But the only other thing is that this ESP32, well, all the ESP32s have a Bluetooth radio and there is a sketch which is able to communicate with the Bluetti and then convert all the messages into MQTT. So what I have learned over the years is that if there is a project that you want to do, maybe you should Google first if somebody has done it. And I was exactly thinking about this because then, you know, if it has a Bluetooth connection, then maybe I can read the data and then convert it to something else. Although I don't have a lot of knowledge in uh, Bluetooth. So somebody has done it already. So this device can read everything from the uh, Bluetti and then convert it to MQTT. So if I just show you, like, uh, maybe I think I'm going to do this one. So if I, okay, maybe I need to reposition the uh, this screen. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? Let me put this one here. No, let me put this one here. So now what we can see is that we have a Bluetti topic. Uh, and then under this, we have these Bluetti well, uh, I have a free EB3A, and then under it we have a state, and within the state we have a, we see a couple of uh, different things. So there is the device information from this particular unit, and um, it has the IP and the MAC address and the uptime, and I think this uptime is in milliseconds, so it changes quite a lot. And then we have the device, and uh, we have a couple of serial number version, but what we can see is we can see uh, DC input power, AC input power. So that's like, uh, so you can see the input here with one single digit, but now it's going to break it down to AC and DC, just like as it does in the uh, Android, or sorry, the mobile app. We also have a DC and AC output power. So the, well, the DC is turned on because it's powering the ESP and there is also a light connected to the 12 volt output. So we are drawing 17 watts all together, so you can see the 70 here as well. And there is also a power generation uh, and a battery percentage. So the battery percentage is 100%, which again, you can also see here. So it shows everything that you would see on the mobile app. And well, this is definitely a nice project. I think I'm going to use it for some experimentation of this device. So maybe do some automation like charge and discharge cycle. But first, uh, in this video, I just quickly wanted to cover this project. So I've already covered all the things that you can do. What I haven't done is uh, that there are a couple of uh, commands as well that you can do. At this point, I have to cheat a little bit because, uh, well, we can already see what is visible on the uh, on the various MQTT topics, but uh, what I forget is the two commands that you can use. So you can turn on the AC input and then the DC input as well, turn them on and off. So it doesn't report the, well, it reports the actual state as well, but you can also turn it in, turn it on, sorry. And in order to use that, I just need to find the, the command. So that's, uh, that's command AC output on. So it's AC output on and you send a one. Okay, sorry, AC output on, you send a one and then the AC turns on. You can't see it from the cable, but it is on. And if I send a zero, then it turns off. Uh, for some reason, my video is a little bit delayed now, but it works instantly. And of course you can do the same with a DC, but because of the unit is part from the DC, I don't want to turn it off, but it works. And um, yeah, so these are the features, turn the AC and the uh, DC on and off. You can't uh, remotely turn on the lamp on and off, but uh, I guess, you know, if this is far away, probably you don't need that anyway. And of course you can get all the values that you would see on the app. You can't really change settings or not change the settings at the moment, but otherwise it uh, works just fine. So now I want to talk a little bit about the installation because uh, it was a little bit difficult. Maybe it was only difficult for me, 
But if you have the same issues, maybe this is going to help. The README on the GitHub page is very well documented, so I think that's going to give you a lot of uh, things like you know how you get started. So you, it, it lists, for example, all the libraries that are needed in order to compile the project for you. And uh, also when you upload it, you need to make a special setting. So once you select your board, like, well, I just used a, what is it, 30 pin ESP. Uh, actually, it's a v room, v, v room 32. So to be honest, I think this is just a generic ESP32 module. So you can use basically any module. But when you do that, you, uh, you select ESP dev module, you set the speeds and everything compo that you would need. But uh, the important thing is that when you select the partition size, you have to select this minimal spiff uh, because this is quite a big sketch because of the Bluetooth stack. So it needs most of the memory which is available. So if you don't select this, uh, your project is not going to compile. And so that was all fun. That was all fine. But then I run into some other issues. And the first issue is that I got some compilation error in one of the Bluetooth library. And it turns out that I was using the old library, sorry, the old board definition for ESP32. So if you come to boards, sorry, file and preferences, this is where you can put the additional boards URL. And I have this um, document that I have saved for myself. So previously I was using this URL for ESP32 and apparently this is the old uh, uh, board definition file and I should really use this one. So you, you make sure that in the board's preferences you have that one. And then once you, um, once you update this, so you see this uh, package ESP32.json, and of course you can uh, provide multiple board definitions. So I have this one for the ESP32, and I have this one for, the, sorry, that was for the ESP8266, and that's, that's for the ESP32. So you can just uh, uh, comment, so provide both of them separated by comma. And once you do that, you have to make sure that your board's definitions are updated as well. So if you go to sketch, uh, I always forget where the board definition is. Uh, I think it's, uh, no, that's the library definition. No, you come here and you go to the board manager. So if you would update the board definition, probably you have uh, some updated uh, packages here as well. So just make sure that you update the one for the ESP32. And after doing all these changes, I still had one error message coming up. And this error message was something similar to this undefined reference to MB, MD5 something. So that was the error message. And actually, I found the answer to this uh, in this uh, um, comment here, uh, well, this post, which says that I need to make some changes to the web authentication.cpp and I would need to make these changes. This might not be required in the future if, uh, um, you know, in the, so that was an issue with the, within the async web server. So if that gets updated uh, in the future, maybe this is going to just work. But again, I had to do this and uh, that was the solution. And after that, I was able to compile the project and upload it to the ESP32. But before you compile the project and up upload it to the ESP32, you have to make one single change in the project. You have to come to the config.h and there is this uh, section here which says Bluetti type. And then here you have to define your, you know, the type that you have. So I have an EB3A, so I had to put Bluetti underscore EB3A underscore H. And it looks like that these are the various types that you can define. So blue at the underscore, well, the type of your device, I'm guessing, and then underscore H. So that's how it works. So this is the only thing that you have to do. And then you compile the project and upload. And then once you do that, then, uh, well, it's going to be fairly simple because uh, this project contains the Wi-Fi manager. So once you upload it then you well obviously power up the ESP32 and then it's going to create a Wi-Fi network which is going to be called ESP32 underscore Bluetti and then you just connect to that Wi-Fi 
and if you connected your phone probably it's going to immediately load the uh, this web page but if not then just open a browser and uh, open 192.168.4.1 and then you would have this Wi-Fi manager screen where you click on configure Wi-Fi and then you configure your Wi-Fi ID your MQTT server details uh, over the over the air update user ID password and also some Bluetooth uh, ID as well and again you save the ESP is going to reboot and then it will start well communicating with the device and also send the messages to MQTT. The only thing I would note is that the Bluetti unit can only communicate with a single Bluetooth device so if your ESP32 is connected then you know once you launch your uh, the application on your mobile phone it will not find the your Bluetti because uh, that is already communicating with the ESP32 so you have to be aware of that so if you want to use your phone app then just disconnect the ESP32 and the device would be available again for Bluetooth connection and I already talked about the common topic and also you could see what topics that you can see within the MQTT and that would be all in a nutshell so as I said I think I'm going to use this project for some testing some automated testing purposes so hopefully there is going to be some follow-up videos on that but if you are interested in this project well definitely I'm going to link the uh, the github link in the video description there is also a, a discord community which I only joined just a, a few days ago and it uh, not a few days ago I think today and uh, there is not an awful lot of traffic there but again if you look at the number of issues then it seems to be quite lively because these are you know all fairly recent uh, questions and it appears to be some communication here so uh, definitely there is a lot happening here so I think there would be there could be some further updates to this project uh, in the coming weeks but I think that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video